name is Lou Lessard. I work as an iron worker for 45 years. I was working on the second narrow bridge when it collapsed. My name is Jim Pratt. I worked for Dominion Bridge Company for 25 years. The day of the collapse, I was working in the office at Second Harbor Bridge. My name is Norm Atkinson. For 50 years, I was an iron worker, and I thought this was the best bridge I've ever worked on. My name is Gary Poirier. I was an iron worker for 33 years and I was an iron worker the day the Second Arrows Bridge collapsed in 1958. It is now called the Iron Workers Memorial Bridge. I used to spend a fair amount of my time out on the structure. It was quite an experience. I mean, you're out there on the front end and that uh, bridge is cantilevered over the false work, but it was part of the job, I guess, for me, and, and I, I enjoyed it. It's part of the trade, but it's uh, your risky business. You know, I mean, you could lose an arm, you could lose a finger, you could lose anything, or you could fall. When I was sent to Second Arts Bridge, I did get my first aid ticket, and we would have weekly safety meetings on all the jobs. We had goggles and we had life jackets, and that's pretty much our safety equipment, and a hard hat, of course. Safety lines were never part of the gear in those days. You hung on by your toes and your fingers, and you just went to work and did your job. And these guys were damn good at it. At the peak of the construction, there was between 60 and 70 men working on the bridge just as our own worker. Because beside the iron worker, there was the painting crew that was painting, and we had a few carpenters and a few operating engineers. So there was probably 100 men working on the bridge sometime. I'm in charge with 10 men to put every piece of steel one by one on the right order, the right sequence, properly fit, and do it safely. You've got to climb up this bracing, bring your hammer out, you crack the pin and get the pin drift in, get bolt, and then you go to the next section. And every man knew what to do when a big piece came down. My job was working with the inspector. We got a torque wrench, and the light lights up when you, it reaches its torque. It was a warm day, and it was just another day. We were all the morning putting a great big piece of steel, 55 ton, and on the afternoon, we had another piece, the same thing, so that was just like any other day, another piece of steel to do. When they brought this 5010 out, it came out on the train. We we're ready for it. And I was lining up the line when I gave the signal to lift it up. All at once, we heard a great big bang, just like a rifle shot. We could hear these loud sounds bang, 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 bang. So I was telling them it was shooting. And it was bolts coming out of the, the splices, breaking off in half. One jolt hesitated, and then she went all the way. And then the noise, it was so loud. I was in the uh, office, large construction trailer. We knew that it was an abnormal sound. The bridge came out from underneath our feet. Then I was just following the locomotive from the deck down to the water. That's about 125 to 150 feet from where I was to the top of the water. We were gone. At Lou Lassard, I talked to him, gone. We were just like that. And, and the engineer across the way was giving us a shot through his television. He said, where the hell is the bridge gone? The first piece of steel that hit the water, that's where I was. We stepped outside, and uh, as soon as we looked to the front of the bridge, we knew there was a problem because the traveler was gone, the locomotive was gone, and uh, people were running back to the office. When I hit the water, I don't really exactly remember. I was running out of air. That was very dirty and mucky because they still mixed the mud on the bottom. Then I didn't know which way to go. I cut my belt loose and all my stuff, all but my buoyancy, and I started this dog paddle to get out. I saw a little bit sun ray coming to the mud. Then I made my way up and saved my own life. It was just bedlam, hollering, 
screaming, people running. Sadly, there were bodies floating with the life jackets still on. It all just seemed so surreal. The tide was coming in. It carried me to the old Second Arrows Bridge. My life jacket was ripped off of me. I hung on to it. I grabbed a two by four. I couldn't see nobody else except myself. I could hear noises over there by the bridge. When I came out of the water, I was lost. I was stunned. So I saw some debris floating, and I managed to float until the boat fished me out. They put me on that pontoon, and I stayed there for half an hour to 45 minutes, directing the security there. Oh, God, it was terrible. My body was so sore, and all, everything was black and blue. And uh, I thought, I didn't think I was going to make it. I'm alive. I'm, the day after the bridge, I'm, I'm on crutches. What could I ask for? I think they say 19 men died that day. It's lots of family, you know, lots of kids and mother and father and brother and friend. And that's affecting an awful lots of people. It's a hell of an experience when you're working with somebody who's not there the next day. These are people that I knew, not only them, I knew their families too, I knew their wives, I knew their kids. That's what made it even tougher, to know that these really good men were not going home. I don't know if I ever got emotional that day or the, or the next. Uh, it, it was, you were still trying to figure out what the hell happened. And at that time, of course, there was no answers. Spans four and five of Vancouver's Second Narrows Bridge plunged into the waters of Burrard Inlet this afternoon with a tremendous hiss and a terrible loss of life. The coroner, Glenn McDonald, asked me to identify the bodies in the morgue. Rather than having 18 families line up at the door knowing what they had in store for them, and if I played a small part in, in relieving them of, of, that, of that anguish and sadness, then fine. About the Royal Commission, at the time I was in hospital during the whole duration until they had the conclusion of it. I was not asked any question. I didn't have the clue what was going on there until I read the report on the, on the paper. The accident at Second Arrows had really nothing to do with safety. It was a calculation error to the web thickness of the grillage that supported the, the Pulsberg legs. So there was an engineering error not to check exactly. The two engineers, of course, were both killed. And I can tell you, had they lived, it would have killed them. You have to live with the error that they missed. I got no back feeling. I got no hate or for anybody. I accept the situation. And I went back to work with full confidence again. We tore it down, we replace it, we finish it, and no casualty after that. Never lost a man after that. We're very proud to have the help of the government and the union, to have the bridge, the second Dow Bridge, renamed the Aaron Walker Memorial Bridge, in memory of those men that lost their life building that bridge, in memory of the survivor and the family of the one they lost their life in. I was at the rededication uh, of, of the bridge in 1994. I couldn't be any prouder of the trade. I felt so good to have that name. So it says on the cenotaph for the boys that tried and didn't make it. And it wasn't their fault. We don't even like to talk about those poor guys, the way they die and everything. That's the stuff. They had wife, they got mother, they got father, they got brother. They come here to try to make a living. They didn't deserve that. Their life was stolen from them. <laughs>